the rising of the sun to its setting, forever the name of the Lord be praised. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Gary, I'm sorry. <laughs> It's a wonderful day, and I think this will be the uh, last time I'll be with you for subbing for Pastor Azor for his uh, summertime stints. So it's been a, certainly a pleasure to be here and worshiping with you, good folks here at Zion. So let us set our hearts to worship this morning by singing our opening hymn, Beautiful Savior.
It is an unhappy business. People are trying to figure out different things. How to find cures in medicine, how to do things politically correct, how to please this person, that person, get this job done, get that job done, worry about raising kids, going to college, da 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 da. It's a lot of things to think about in your lifetime. It's an unhappy task, but it's all given to us because of sin, because if Adam and Eve wouldn't have sinned, we'd have everything we needed. And we wouldn't worry about where we're going to plug in our electric car. Because we wouldn't need one. But did you ever think that everything we chase after, everything we strive for, is a result that sin came into the world because everything was perfect to begin with? But that got changed. And so Solomon says, I've seen everything that's done under the sun, and behold, it's all vanity and a striving after wind. I hated my toil in life, in which I toiled under. It was a hard task, deciding things, being a judge, an arbitrator, a king, ruling a country, you know, and managing all that farm equipment he had. You know, those 300 combines? Oh, it's concubines, I'm sorry. And uh, he says, I, I, I try to master all this and use my wisdom under the sun, but th this is all vanity. It, it, it fades. It doesn't solve all the problems, but I'm working at it. So I just about gave up to despair. You work, you work, you work, Solomon says. All oh, you use your wisdom and knowledge. And one day you're not going to be here and you've got to give it to somebody who didn't earn it. I already told my kids, we're fixing that problem. We're spending their inheritance before we die. So see, they have nothing to worry about. They also threatened me to get rid of all the junk we have because they don't want to be stuck with it. You see, Solomon had those same concerns just like us today. What's retirement going to be like? I'm going to work. Who, who's going to really benefit from it in the end? Because one day I'll be gone and it's all going to be here. And who's going to take care of it? Who's going to manage it? Who's going to enjoy it? Especially those who didn't even work for it. He said, this is a vanity and a great evil. So what does man have for all the toil and striving a heart in which he toils under the sun? His days are full of sorrow and his work is a vexation. Even in the night, his heart does not rest because he keeps thinking about it. How many people you think slept soundly the night before the lottery drawing? Clutching that ticket in their hand. Yeah, well, I did too. I didn't worry about it. I think I told you this, but I had a lady at Sunny Ridge one time. A nurse came up to me, and the, the lottery was up to, uh, like, I don't know, 300 million and he said, Pastor Tom, would you bless my lottery ticket? And I go, and, and the nurses around her said, I don't believe you ask him that. And I took it graciously and I smiled and said, sure, I will, with one condition. If you win, you give half to the church. She snatched that ticket out of my hand and said, I'll take my own chances, thank you. And walked away. So, people are chasing after the wind. And then Solomon says, well, you know what? Your heart does not rest. Because a lot of times all we want is more. When John D. Rockefeller became a millionaire, the first millionaire in the United States back in the 1800s, he was interviewed by uh, the New Yorker magazine reporter. And he says, so Mr. Rockefeller, you're, you're the America's first millionaire. One is enough, enough. And he said, just one dollar more. Just one dollar more. That's like, I'll get to it tomorrow. Tomorrow never comes. And so we fool ourselves. Paul wrote in Colossians, he says, such are things are above, but not on things that are on earth. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you. 
your lust, your desires, your purity, passions, covetedness, wanting more, which is idolatry. Yes, and Solomon says there's nothing better for us that we should eat and drink and find enjoyment in work. This also, I saw, is from the hand of God. It's a gift. You've heard the saying that if you enjoy what you do, you never go to work a day in your life. Now, I know a lot of jobs need to be done. How many of you ever watched Mike Rowe on Dirty Jobs? Somebody's got to do it. And I've done some of those dirty jobs. I remember laying a water pipe out in the middle of nowhere working for the county one time. It's a part-time job. I slipped and fell and landed face first in a pig pen underwater. And I looked up and there was a sow looking me in the face. They didn't let me ride home in the truck until they drenched me under the fire hose. Been there, done it. Don't regret it. They say it built character. That stunk. <laughs> but you know, to go through that in life, to work your way up from the bottom, to find satisfaction in what you do, even if it's a little craft project, woodworking project, taking care of your yard, don't you get the feeling of satisfaction when you look at, oh yeah, boy, this lawnmower pushing this is hard and everything else, and then you sit back and you look at it and say, well, look at the yard, it looks good. That little nicky nacky thing I made, that's nice. That little birdhouse I made for my neighbor or my daughter or my grandson, that turned out pretty good. And that's what Solomon is saying. Find enjoyment in what you do because it's a gift from God that you're able to do it, that you're able to be productive. He's apart from God, who can eat or who can find enjoyment? In fact, you can't even eat if it's not for God. I asked my uh, confirmation kids one time, I said, hey, you know where Big Macs come from? And one kid said, yeah, uh, Pastor Tom, they come from the Big Mac factory. You mean McDonald's gets them already made and they just hand them out the window? Well, yeah, isn't that how it works? I said, no, what is uh, the hamburger made of? Well, a cow, a steer. So what's the bun made out of? Well, a farmer had to grow the wheat. <clears throat> Those little sesame seeds, they come from a plant grown in the earth. The lettuce, the pickles, all vegetables grown on the earth that God gave us. You know, but that special sauce, heaven knows where that comes from. But I said, you see, God made that Big Mac possible. And he let people work to put it all together so your mom and dad could take you there and get a Big Mac. When you go to the store and buy a gallon of milk, you, you should know where it comes from. And the farmer that grew the crops. And again, back to God who gave us the earth to plant the crops and so I see everything the common denominator is it's a gift from God God has given us wisdom and knowledge and joy to those who please him but to the sinner he has given the business of gathering and collecting only to have it taken away this is vanity Jesus said in the Gospel of Luke, Take care and be on your guard against all covetedness, for one's life does not consist on the abundance of his possessions. And he goes on and tells the parable about the man who was rich and had a great crop. He's going to have bigger barns and everything, and I'm going to kick back and take it easy. I don't need to do nothing. But God said to him, You're a fool. This night your soul is required of you. And all of excuse me, the things you have prepared, the things that you thought you did for yourself, the things that you thought were blessed by yourself, and no thanks to God, whose will they be? So is the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich 
toward God. You see, friends, wealth in itself is not bad, unless it's your God. Have you ever seen a hearse with a trailer hitch? Have you ever seen a U-Haul truck in a funeral possession, procession? No. You probably heard the old joke where the husband was so tight, he pinched all his pennies, gave his wife just minimal, minimal bare essentials. And he stuffed all his money in his mattress because he didn't trust banks. And he's laying on his deathbed. And he calls his wife and he says, I got over $100,000 in this mattress. And when I die, I want you to put it in my casket. And being the dutiful wife, she says, yes, dear. And so he died. And they're at the funeral home. And she shared in confidence with her friend that story. And she goes, you didn't do it, did you? She says, yes, I did. How could you do such a thing? She says, I wrote him a check. If wealth is a vexation, or if it's your vanity, then you're not in a very good spot. Work is a gift from God. We are not, what a lot of people seem to believe, entitled to anything. A lot of us here are the, the age where we knew what it was like if you wanted something, you worked for it. And we've seen through our lifetime how we've become a nation of entitlements for which us older people now pay for. It's not a political statement. It's a way how our world has gone bad. We are not entitled to anything, but we are blessed in everything. The greatest work, the greatest toil was done for us by Jesus on his cross. A man of sorrows who had no earthly possessions. Everything he had was borrowed or given to him and he did not ask for it. But he gave everything. Even his life so that we may live, so that when we take our last breath, we do not end up bankrupt and on the other side of heaven. So dear friends, putting aside the crazy world in which we live, the sinful world in which we live, the materialistic world in which we live, Find contentment, find enjoyment, find peace, find hope, and especially in your baptismal promise, know the forgiveness you have in Christ Jesus. For there is nothing better. Amen. And now may the peace of God that goes beyond all our understanding keep our hearts and minds in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you now to please stand as we uh, say the words of the Nicene Creed together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day rose again 
according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God, and he will come again. Offerings unto the Lord and sing the offering him. How wide the love of Christ. Remembering our baptism does not necessarily mean recapturing the moment. For many of us were baptized as infants. But it does mean a willingness to follow our Lord each day. We sing, let us ever walk with Jesus to guide our prayers to God. in the abundance of his possessions. 
For all who are deceived by the world's valuing property over people and power over service, that God would open their eyes that they serve him above all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all who focus on themselves, trusting their own efforts rather than relying on the mercy and blessing of our Heavenly Father, that God would move them to loving service for the people around them. Let us pray to the Lord. For the church around the world, wherever the gospel is proclaimed, calling people to follow our Lord as pilgrims, treading toward the gracious and eternal promises of Christ, that God would protect and direct her, let us pray to the Lord. person who awakens to another day of discomfort and pain, that God would provide strength, endurance, and solace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all who call out to God for relief from illness, pain, or difficult circumstances, especially pray for Nancy, for Ruby, Charlene, for Kenneth and Landon, for Denise, and Sherry, for Greg, Karen, for Don and Jean, for Mike and Sharon, for Mary Ellen, for Butch, for Richard and Joe, and for all those we know in our hearts. That God would hear their prayers and graciously answer them. In his almighty wisdom and love, let us pray to the Lord. For the leaders of the nations, that God would give them to provide decent food, clothing, and shelter for their citizens, and protection from both enemies outside their borders and from lawlessness within. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. in our Lord's victory. Let us pray to the Lord. For health care workers, first responders, and all those who minister to people nearing the end of this mortal life, that God would sustain them in their ministry and use them as his instruments for Jesus' sake. Let us pray to the Lord. For ourselves, that we look beyond the grave in our daily living, anticipating our entry into heaven and living in the light of God's love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord and Lord, we pray for those in military service to our country, for the men and women who value our freedoms and protect them. May you watch over them and 
course of their duties and give them that constant spirit with joy to serve God and country. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, we pray for those who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week, especially for Abby, for Zach, for Whitney, for Mackenzie, Paige, Anthony, Eugene, Jacob, and Isaac. Lord, you've given us those days to remember when we took our first breath upon this earth. You have watched over us and protected those for whom we mentioned, and we pray that your blessings continue upon them for many years to come. And for those whom we know celebrating wedding anniversaries, may their love for one another continue to blossom and to grow with you at the center of their life. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, we bring to you now those special prayers upon our hearts that only you know. Into your hands, Heavenly Father, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now let's prepare to receive the Lord's Supper. Please stand. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created, and called us not only to physical life, but also to eternal life with you through the sacrifice of your Son. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation he won for us on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we pray that you would forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant that we faithfully receive our Lord's body and blood here on earth. Until that day, we join the host of heaven at the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. To you alone, O Father, be our glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to him, saying, Drink of all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen, O Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray.
peace of the Lord be with you all. Please be seated.
We give thanks to Almighty God that you have refreshed us through the sacrament. Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The blessing of Almighty God, the Father, who graciously call you his sons and daughters, the Son in whose death and resurrection has given you eternal life, and the Holy Spirit who has given you the gift of faith to trust all the promises of God, be upon you now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. His car ran out of gas. And so he got out and thought he saw a billboard gas station a couple of miles down the road. And he thought he'd hitchhike to the gas station and ask for a gas can. And so he sticks out his thumb and the car just boom, right on by. Another car. And finally, this trucker stops. And he pulls the semi over and he says, Father, get in the truck. I'll give you a ride to the gas station. So the trucker is going through the gears. He's picking up speed. And just as he gets rolling along, a rabbit jumps out in front of the truck. And he just, wham, flattens that poor bunny. And he pulls over and he says, Father, I've never hurt one of God's creatures, let alone kill one. What are we going to do? This is terrible. And the priest said, don't worry. 
So they got out of the truck, they went back, they looked at the poor rabbit, and the priest put a took a bottle of uh, clear liquid out of his jacket pocket, and he sprinkles it on the rabbit, and the rabbit jumps back up to life. Hops to the side of the road, he looks at the priest, and he waves to him. Hops a little more into the field, turns and looks at the priest, and waves again. And then finally, before he gets to the edge of the woods, he turns one more time and waves to the priest. And the trucker said, Father, that's a miracle. What was in that bottle? Holy water? And he goes, no, son, that was hair restorer with a permanent wave. <laughs> now that was a hair-raising story. <laughs> Again, God's blessings to all of you. And when you go home this morning, when you go to bed tonight, when you rise tomorrow and all the tomorrows, look around you and see how blessed you really are for where you're at and what you have, all by the grace of God. God's peace be with you.